Welcome back to Pray TV. We're so glad that you have joined us and that you're here with us. And I have as my special guest, Doug Tunney. And Doug, thank you for joining me. Thank you, I'm ha happy to be here. It is just really a blessing to be with Doug. I've known Doug since I think 1992. I remember very specifically at that time, I think it was 92, that you were doing that event up in Manchester. Is that yeah, correct? the big crusade, yeah, with John Jacobs and the power team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't imagine how they did that. You know, they would take these handcuffs, and some of them had two One sets had, of The big guy uh, had three. Uh, three? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I, I tell you, it's just crazy. <laughs> but uh, that was an effective means of being able to do evangelism in that, in that time. And That's they right. really had a, a, a powerful uh, ministry. And uh, Doug, I'm going to read our scripture for today, and uh, then I'm going to ask you just to share with us and our folk what this scripture means to okay. you. All right. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 17, verse 12, in everything, treat people the same way you want them to treat you, doing for them what you want them to do for you. Mm. What does that mean to you? Well, I think uh, I grew up in a church where it was, uh, uh, I guess we could call the word liberal church. I never really heard the gospel. I was baptized at 13 years old. And so I was, quote, a Christian, but nobody took the time to really share the gospel with me. So I never heard the gospel until I went to college. When I went to college, this random stranger came up to me and he showed me the greatest act of kindness that I'd ever had in my life. He shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with me. And through that, I received Christ and my life was transformed, I became a new man. So if I want to think about the kindest thing I can do for other people, it's to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And you know, we're going to come back with Doug and have a really lovely time of interview and talking and sharing with him. But right now, because tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer, we have got Greg and he is over there in Connecticut, and he has Mary Bruce, who is the coordinator for the Northeast region, nine states that she brings leadership to for the National Day of Prayer. And we're gonna hand it off to them, and then we'll be back. Go ahead, Greg. Thanks, Brent. Uh, we are with the Mary Bruce. <laughs> Yes, Mary, your reputation <laughs> precedes you, and uh, you've been praying mm -hmm. for this region for a very long time. Yes, so I have. Tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer. Yes. Tell us about it. What's going on here in this uh, New England and the Northeast? Well, we're really excited. Um, first of all, I'm overseeing New England and New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. So there are Wonderful. nine states that are considered the Northeast states. Those are some and good states. They're all, I got a report last night from all of them except one, and there is so much happening on yeah. the National Day of Prayer. It is so exciting. Is. Um, I just want to encourage everybody to go to the website, nationaldayofprayer.org, because mm. you can find your events there. We get lots of phone calls this last week, um, and we're just very excited about all that's happening. There are events taking place at every state capitol, and uh, our theme this year is uh, from Ephesians 4 verse 3 that says, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Mm. And so everybody, we want to make every effort to maintain a spirit of unity. And we can only do that by the Holy Spirit. That's right. So that is the theme that all of our coordinators are uh, focusing on this year. Wonderful. That's the answer to Jesus's prayer. It's, to be one as he and the Father are one. That's right. It's a, it's a real challenge. And it's bec the only way we can do it is because of the centrality of Jesus Christ. Yes. You know, we all have our preferences. We all have uh, our, our individuality. Mm. But when we look to Jesus as our central focus, then we can honor the differences, but still uh, keep a unity in the spirit. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And just to tell us a little bit about praying the love of God over people and cities and states and our nation. Well, we have, um, 
it is a challenge, but it is wonderful. I love to pray, and uh, I pray for our legislators all the time in Connecticut, which yeah. is where I'm located. But all of our state coordinators are doing the same thing. They're having, they're having inroads. It's like the government is changing. We can see that um, they're inviting prayer walkers into the buildings. Mm. They're inviting uh, people to host prayer on a regular basis in our state capitals. Uh, Maine, they're in there every week. They've got uh, 11 county legislators that are gonna be coming and praying at wow. their event. So it's very exciting to hear the news of what's happening all over the region. That is exciting. Mm -hmm. I know here in Connecticut, we've prayed at, in every single town for, this would be the, maybe the eighth, eighth or, year. Eighth year. The eighth year, yes. So that's wonderful. And it's a goal. 169 towns right. or something like that. So it's a measurable goal, you know, and that's a lot of fun too, when you have a measurable goal of where you're going to be praying and how yes. to pray. And we're ho hoping that for all the states, but each state is different. Mm. Um, and I just think of all the people who are like in the state of Vermont, which is a very rural state. It's not mm. like they're all together in the big cities. So we want to encourage everybody that their prayer counts. Mm. And we just want to stir up everyone to be praying on the National Day of Prayer. Indeed. Now, can we pray for tomorrow's uh, events and all of what's going on That together? would be great. That would be wonderful. That. Okay. So let's just pray. And would Mary. you mind if I pray for the state coordinators? Please. Okay. Father in heaven, I yes, just thank Lord. you so much for these Jesus. dedicated, uh, loyal individuals who have taken up this burden thank to you. pray and to stir others to pray. We mobilize oh, unified oh. public prayer for America, and that's what each one of them is doing. So I want to pray for mm. prayer, uh, travel mercies for them as they travel around their state, uh, Lord, for the places where they host events, where their uh, state capitals, they'll all be at their state capitals sometime during the day, mm -hmm. and for all the other activities that they'll participate in. I pray for these wonderful, dedicated yes, uh, individuals th that they would have the opportunity to mentor others. Mm -hmm. Lord, that you're going to continue yes, the grow growth them. process uh, tomorrow. Multiply. There are going to be people who will be exercising their faith in public, mm -hmm. something which they may not have ever done before. So I pray for your protection on them in their spirit, in their mind, in their will, in their emotions. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. It's exciting. It's a very exciting. National Day of Prayer. Now back to you, Brant. Thank you, Greg. Boy, I'll tell you, it's just always wonderful to hear what you have to share. And Mary, thank you for all of the labors of love that you have put into these efforts of the National Day of Prayer. And we really do encourage people to go to that website and find out all of the exciting things that are going on in the National Day of Prayer. And now we're back here with Doug. Thank you, Doug, for continuing to stay with us. And we're going to just now ask you to be able to just open up your heart and share with our folk some of the exciting things. We talked a little bit about the history, but I, I know there's a lot of things that God is doing in the current phase of your life and ministry. Just share with the folk. Well, uh, at this time, I'm involved with an organization called Youth with a Mission. Uh, we came here to Boston 11 years ago to found uh, Youth of the Mission Boston. We're very happy to be a part of it. Uh, Youth of the Mission is an organization that has 11, 1,700 locations around the world. And so we're one of 1,700 locations. We're international, interdenominational. And so we're sharing the gospel with people around the world. We're in every country, and we are gospel preaching people. And, um, and so we have 35 full-time missionaries now here in Boston that are sharing the Lord all over the city all the time. And I'm also involved with an, a wonderful organization called the Billy Graham Organization. I'm the state representative for the state of Massachusetts, and I promote the, the film series that they have called My Hope, where 10.4 million have come to Christ through these film series around the world. And so I promote that in the state of Massachusetts. So I'm involved heavily in both organizations, and that's kind of what I do. Well, we are really in awe of what God has done in your life, through your life. Um, I think it's important that people get a little bit of an idea of the longevity and commitment that you've had to the raising up of, of um, 
missionaries going out into these areas with training, but then also the fact that you established a base in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. and you were there for a long time, yeah. and then God brought you back here into New England and you have been here now, what is it, 10 years? 11 years. 11 years. Mm -hmm. So. I, I think that some of the history, and then we want, because we are a prayer program, we want to actually just take time to be able to pray with you and for you. Mm. So just give us a little bit more of that history. Well, I think uh, one of the things that happened was when I began to get exposed to Youth of the Mission, there was a woman in the organization, oh, she's still with us. Her name is Joy Dawson. And Joy Dawson uh, taught us about prayer. And I had grown up, uh, and had what I call church prayer meetings, which are pretty random, like one person prays about something, maybe their uncle, and then all of a sudden another person's on a completely other subject, and so it's bouncing around everywhere, where Joy said, why don't we do it a different way? Why don't we wait to hear from the Lord, ask God what we should pray for, and then pray that into, into action. You know, like release the hand of God into that situation. Really emphasis on James 5, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I remember studying the word effectual. It means to produce the, the desired effect. So you actually like produce something that didn't exist before. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It means it's going to happen because of that. But it isn't like our own prayers. We didn't say, okay, you have cancer, so you're going to be healed instantly. You know, we need to know what God wants. You know, is the Lord going to move in that person's life? Is there something about that cancer that we need to say, God? Because I realized when Joy taught us, I don't really know how to pray as I should. And so I really need to hear from the Lord. <clears throat> and so I began a discipline of that throughout my life of uh, waiting to hear from God. You know, and many, many people would come up to me and ask me to pray for them. And I'd say, you know, <clears throat> I'm going to wait upon the Lord for a moment, you know, because, and they'd be, get kind of upset with me. They said, just pray I get healed. I said, well, you know, I, I don't know what God is doing. I remember one woman, she came up to me and she says, I have migraine headaches and I never can get over them. It puts me down for days at a time. Pray I get healed. I said, ma'am, just let, let me wait upon the Lord. She was upset with me for waiting. And so I waited a moment and the Lord said to me, <clears throat> this woman <clears throat> has been disappointed <clears throat> with every leader in her life. And so because of that, she worries nonstop, 24 hours a day. You need to speak to her about my faithfulness and how good I am and how good I've been to you. And so I said, ma'am, I want to tell you a story. And I began to tell her of the faithfulness of God, particular to my family, all the miracles he's done for my family. I have a wonderful wife, five children. We've been, I've been a missionary in 50 countries around the world and seen God provide for us again and again and again. In Europe, when we had nothing, God miraculously would supply for us. I began to tell her all those stories. About 10 minutes into the storytelling, she did this. She went, oh, just relaxed. And I told her, I said, you just got healed. She said, I feel good. I said, ma'am, I don't even need to pray for you because you wow. got what wow. I wanted. You know, so the idea is <clears throat> we all think we know how to pray, but sometimes God knows exactly why that situation is occurring in that person's life. You know, that is really special. It is to do with really <clears throat> following the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And I, you know, I don't want to go on into my stories because <laughs> I think that anybody who has really faithfully tried to follow the Lord, you know, they have their stories and, and I could, I could rattle off a few as, as well, but I, I am just so, I'm just so pleased that we're bringing this kind of a focus about really hearing the Holy Spirit, really listening for His voice. And, and, and Doug, I, I, as I said, I want people to be able to pray with you, pray for you, be able to stand alongside of you. And so I'm going to begin by just praying for you here at the table. And I'm going to encourage uh, each of us to be able to pray for particularly this amazing work of, of YWAM Youth with a Mission. And of course, the Billy Graham organization. You, you just can't find a finer uh, organization of service for the kingdom of God 
than what Mr. Graham has put together in his life. And now in his passing, his son is carrying on the great work. So Doug, I'm gonna pray. I'm okay. gonna pray with you and pray All for right. you. Okay. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you will really guide us in our prayers today, even mm -hmm. as Doug brought out that point about really listening for the leadership of your still small voice. When praying for healing, when praying for individuals in difficulties or different kinds of circumstances, we really need your guidance. Lord, the disciples, they walked with you for three years and they still needed instruction. They said, teach us, Lord, how to pray. And so, Father, we don't think that we're better than them. We just come and we ask, Lord, would you show us today how to pray, particularly for missions that's happening around the world. Lord, we ask that you would guide and you would bless, you would pour out your spirit, that you'd minister to Doug and to his wife, Deb, and to their team here in Boston. And we know it's gone on to the second generation and his son is actually in charge and running that team. And we're so grateful for that, Lord. But we really pray that Holy Spirit, you will accomplish all of your intended purposes in the earth. And Father, we pray that you will just bring your grace upon this man and upon his work. And Father, we ask, Lord, now, that you will just give him liberty and freedom to be able to pray into this season and into this time as well. Doug, would you just continue to lead us? Oh Lord, thank you so much that uh, your Holy Spirit directs us and guides us in how to pray. Lord, I don't know what situation is going on in Syria, different parts of the world, how to pray accurately, but you know exactly how we should pray. And so I pray for uh, myself and, and Brant and those watching, God, we would, we would hear your voice. We would wait to hear from your voice. And you would direct our prayers. They won't be prayers that we think of, but they'll be prayers that just you just whisper in our ear. And as you whisper in our ear, we pray those things out and see those things come to pass. Lord, we pray, God, that you would move in Boston. You would move in, in uh, New England, in the Northeast, especially as the National Day of Prayer is coming. Lord, what conflicts are in our country today? Things are going on. Things are crazy. God, direct our prayers, God, that we can have arrow prayers, prayers that are specifically directed by your, your presence and your guidance. And as we pray those prayers, Lord, the enemy's work will be destroyed and you will be raised up in your kingdom established in that area of our nation. We do pray, God, for our president and for the leaders of our nation. God, that you would move in their lives in a tremendous way. Holy Spirit, you would direct them and guide them in all that they do. And Lord, the ones that are just opposing you, Lord God, touch them, move in their life, or remove them from office, God. We pray, God, that those who are for your kingdom and for your glory would roll and reign in our nation. And we pray, God, for the body of Christ, God, that we would become to people who would call upon your name, not just uh, talk a lot, but Lord, we would talk to you a lot and hear from you a lot and hear and obey your voice. I thank you for hearing this prayer in Jesus' name, amen. And Father, we just continue to wait upon you as we prepare for this wonderful national experience of the National Day of Prayer. We ask, Lord, that there will come into the hearts of men and women a desire, a hunger, to be able to know you and to be able to reach out for you Lord, on this tomorrow, being the National Day of Prayer, on this special season, this special time, I just pray that you will cause people whose hearts are far from you or have gotten into a place of mistrusting you to be able to be brought in humility and humbly wait upon you. So Lord, we thank you for accomplishing your purposes. We thank you for doing your work here today. And thank you, Doug, for being with us around this prayer table. Mm. I really appreciate you mm -hmm. being here. And I do appreciate everything that you're doing. You are such a faithful man. And I thank you. And I just encourage you now 
to be prepared for your day, your night. I know this goes around the world. We have so many people that are watching on the other side of the globe, so I don't know whether it's day or night, here or there. But wherever it is for you, be prepared to really take hold of God today and listen for his voice as he's guiding and directing you. Amen.